In this episode, we're gonna explore the intertidal zone of Bali! Can we skip to the good part? We're finally here at the beach and it's a huge intertidal zone! It's mainly a seagrass meadow and it's so huge that it's like 10 times as big as what we have back at home. Like literally 10 times, like it's all the way out there. We will find a lot of animals that like to hide amongst the seagrass. A lot of the bigger sea stars, the chonkier ones. Hopefully a lot of sea urchins as well and hopefully sea cucumbers. A lot of echinoderms. Echinoderms! Echinoderms! So there are over 7,000 different kinds of species of echinoderms and the ones you can find in Singapore include your sea stars, brittle stars, feather stars, sea cucumbers, sand dollars, sea urchins and even basket stars. There's a lot! Two big ones eh? Synaptic sea cucumber! So this is a brown one, this is a green one and this is the orange one with stripes. So they come in very bright colours for some reason. So sea cucumbers, they are echinoderms and there's different kinds of sea cucumber but the ones that we're seeing here is known as synaptic sea cucumber. So synaptic ones, um, I like the usual ones that have sort of a more complete and tougher, stiffer body, right? The synaptic ones are really soft because they are meant to cling onto an object, in this case, the seagrass. So sea stars, they are echinoderms as well. Echinoderm means spiny skin, so obviously the skin is not exactly very smooth. And also they have pentaradial symmetry, meaning it's like five-sided symmetry, as you can see from the sea stars. For the sea stars, they have rows of tubular feet, which they use it not only to move around, but also to breathe because they take in dissolved oxygen. And they have no blood. Yeah, they have no heart, they have no blood. The blood is the seawater, so they have an internal water vascular system. So for some species, you cannot really see the feet very clearly, especially with the chunkier, knobbly sea stars. But for the sense star, you can actually see the tubular feet quite clearly. It's like a multiple-sided knobbly. Yeah! I mean, sea stars are, they, are, they are not their five arms, but they can have more than five arms. They can have less than five arms also. Sometimes it's because, you know, one of their arms got eaten and they are just trying to regenerate it. I have no idea what species this is, but I'm going to call it the galaxy sea star because it looks like they have a tiny little orange stars all around and it's so pretty. So what is sea stars? Well, there are a few predators, sea turtles, bigger fishes, and even sea stars can eat other sea stars as long as it is small enough to fit inside their mouth. But that being said, right, sea stars, because of their spiny skin, right, they are not exactly the easiest to eat, which is why you can actually find a lot of them around and they are found in almost every part of the ocean, from the intertidal zone to the deep seabed. I found a cushion star, it's my favourite star in the world! The difference between cushion star and normal sea star? They are not, they are the same. It's just that it's another subgroup of a sea star that doesn't really look like they have five obvious arms because they are very cinched and then they are like inflated bodies. So, but you can see, you can see the rough shape. Oh my god, my god, very big brittle star. Oh god, oh goodness. Brittle star, they are usually mistaken for sea stars, but as you can see, it doesn't really look anything like a sea star. They actually move using their spindly arms instead of tubular feet as a sea stars. And then right here on the other side, we actually have sea urchins. Sea urchins, can you see the spines are moving? If the spines drop off, you can actually see their pentaradial symmetry as well. And obviously, their spiky cell is to prevent enemies and predators from touching them. Also, for them to like get themselves into crevices like this so they won't be eaten easily. It's a different kind. I think this is like pretty much echinoderm heaven for all of them. Another sea urchin. So they are herbivores. Their mouth is underneath, so they slowly graze on the algae on the rock using their really, really special mouth known as Aristotodenton. Yeah. We found a juvenile lionfish here and they are actually pretty invasive in a lot of areas in the world and they are venomous. It's a cool find! But yes, let's not go too near it. Let's leave it alone. So these are seagrass hydroids. So hydroids, they are under the same family as the sea anemone, meaning they can actually sting. So even though their sting cannot really kill you, um, it does sting quite painfully and it's quite persistent. And it's actually very translucent. So you don't even know that you get stung by a hydroid. And that's usually happens to divers and intertidal people like ourselves. So be careful, because there's a lot of them around. They, uh... Poisonous. Yeah, blue ring. Yeah. Blue ring octop. Oh my god, how, how do you catch it? So the very lovely uncle just now just showed us that he caught a blue ring octopus along with some juvenile lion fishes. So yes, very scary venomous creatures that live around this area, which is why always gear up. And I come a bit scared now, but yes, let's continue exploring and let's be more vigilant. Oh my god. It's 
time. So just like how sea stars have tube feet, sea urchins they also have tube feet as well. They mainly move using their spines, but as for this one, you can see it's actually wriggling its tube feet very actively. The sea stars have skeletons. Well, the answer is no, but they do have like some sort of internal skeleton. So they have small little tiny calcium like pit bits called ossicles and they're all distributed around the echinoderm itself. So when you touch an echinoderm, right, sometimes at first it's soft, but when they feel like someone is touching them, they actually turn hard because the muscles and ossicles, you know, they will form in such a way that it will harden its whole body up. The tide is coming in, so we're being pushed to the sandy shore area. We can find a lot of creatures that live around here, including the common sand star which we can find in Singapore. Sand dollar is part of the Echinoderm family. You can see the panda radial symmetry here. And they're filled with tiny little hairs, so even though they don't look like they're alive, they're actually living animals. You can actually see the tiny hairs are moving, so that's how they move around the sand. That's how they feed as well. They channel small sand particles to the mouth underneath. So this concludes the end of our special Bali episode in the Intertidal Zone. We found a lot of cool echinoderms and the amazing thing is that you can not only find them in the seagrass meadows but also in sandy shore and other ecosystems as well. Stay tuned for our bonus video, Baby Sea Turtles! Ah, ah. Till next time, just keep thinking! <laughs>